guys! In this video, I am going to be painting something related to an upcoming issue of Wargame Soldiers and Strategy, and that's uh, number 71, if you haven't been keeping track. It's going to be out kind of around the end of February or sort of the beginning of March, and we've got a theme that's focusing on the conquest of the New World. So there's going to be a lot of conquistadors and Aztec warriors in there and that kind of thing. So I wanted to paint something that kind of related that theme also because I think Mesoamerican warriors are really cool. They have really awesome costumes. They're really different. I didn't have any figures like that, unfortunately, in my current collection, but uh, I got a nice surprise recently because um, Jad, he's the owner of Gringo 40s, he sent me an Aztec warrior. I think this is from one of his upcoming ranges because I could not find it on his website, so uh, if I'm wrong about that, I will post a correction in the text description under this video. But I, th I think he's still, these are just brand new and, that, and that's why they're not on the website yet. They are just about to come out. He already has some conquistadors and some Mayan warriors. But I think the Aztecs are kind of a new thing. And they're really well sculpted. They're really nice 28 millimeter figures. Uh, I have not seen other figures in the range, but I assume there's going to be more variety there. Um, as you can see, this guy... Um, he has kind of a, that's a really weird costume that he's wearing, and uh, Jed was really kind enough to send me uh, a textual description of how to paint this guy sort of Xerox from a book because I had absolutely no clue, and because I assume because this is so new, there aren't really any pictures or photographs out yet of how to paint this figure. And according to the description, you know, you've got a lot of choice in how to paint this. There's a lot of possible color combinations you can use, even sort of a starry night pattern. There's really this, is, this figure gives you a lot of options, but I'm never completely comfortable painting something totally just from a text description. I'm afraid I'll mess something up. So I did do some research on the internet, and I was luckily able to find some pictures of this, this uniform, this outfit. So I'm going to be using that as my reference. There's sort of a uh, little drawing from, I think, in sort of a period Aztec or a Spanish codex that shows the colors on this suit, or at least one of the possible color combinations you would see on the, this suit, and that's what I'm going to be using for my figure. But as I said, you've got a lot of choice once you, if and when you pick up this figure, you'll have a lot of choice in how you can be doing this. Um, as you can see, I've already given him a base coat of enamel. I have not painted his skin yet like I usually do because I've had some requests for how to do um, Native American skin or, you know, Mesoamerican skin in the past, so I thought I would show that in this video as well. Um, I actually, those two things are probably not exactly the same. There's definitely variation between, you know, different people in different parts of, you know, the North American, South American in terms of their skin tones, but I'm going to try and take an average and give you a general idea of how you can be painting this guy. Um, let's see, just one other thing I think I want to mention. Um, I have been mentioning every video, I think, who made each figure, but sometimes, you know, you forget and it's not very handy, and a commenter recently very rightly pointed out that it would be way handier if I would you know, tell you who made the figure in the video description. So I'm gonna, from now on, I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna provide you with the des a description or, you know, the manufacturer of the, each figure. And I'm, whenever possible, I'm gonna provide a link to the website of the manufacturer too. And if I can, to a page where you can directly order the figure, though. I can't promise I can do that all the time. For example, with this guy, since he's so new, I don't think he has his own page. So I'll do my best with that, but hopefully you'll find that more useful. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and get started on this guy. So to start out, I'm going to go ahead and base coat all of the skin areas of this figure using the um, uh, Foundry Native American Flesh Triad, and I am starting out here with the shade tone. I'm then going to apply a wash of a uh, Foundry Agrax Earthshade to darken up the skin and get it uh, to have a more brownish cast. Now it's time to start highlighting up the skin and I am going to start out by using the Native American Flesh Medium Tone and applying that to all of the areas uh, very carefully. Uh, then, after I've done that, I will move on and make sure I add some extra deep coloring into the recesses and between the toes and fingers and or under the eyes and such. Uh, and I will be using Vallejo Black Red for that. Um, once that's done, then I will move on to using the Native American uh, Flesh Light Tone 
and I will basically just be going over areas of the skin where I want extra highlights to appear. Um, this, is, this whole technique is really a lot like painting normal flesh on tones, it's just with a slightly different triad. And one reason I used the Agrax Earthshade wash before in this case specifically was because I wanted to make sure the skin got a little bit browner just to cut out the excessive redness because this particular um, this particular triad has a very reddish cast to it, but I didn't want it to get too red. And then finally I'm going to highlight just areas of extreme uh, light using some of the flesh light from the regular foundry, foundry flesh triad. When I'm finished with all of the skin, I'm then also really going to quickly apply some color to the lip. And I did this by mixing the Native American flesh shade light with a little wine stain red, red light working on his suit and in the sources I use this warrior has a bright red suit made out of feathers and it can be tricky to find a red paint with really really good coverage that's this bright and so I used one of the Citadel base paints um, which is Bafiston red in this case so I get and that is exactly what you get a very bright red that covers really well so you don't have to layer it on a lot and I'm going to apply this to his whole suit also to his pointy hat and um, to his shield or the front of his shield and sort of the feathers which are hanging down from the shield as well. I'm then going to wash the whole suit with Citadel Carborg Crimson and this is to really bring out the, the feather detail so you can see all of the texture that's on this suit and it also will darken everything up nicely and provide a good base to start highlighting on. I'm now going to start highlighting the figure and I'm using um, Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet for this. I've thinned it down a little bit and basically what you want to do here is you want to sort of do what I like to call overbrushing and it's a sort of related to dry brushing if you're familiar with that which involves wiping basically all the paint off your brush and um, then sort of rubbing it over the surface. I don't want to do that here because the effect you get from dry brushing is sometimes a little, it looks a little dusty for lack of a better word. and it, it's, it doesn't necessarily have the smoothness that I want here. Overbrushing is sort of a related technique where you're using a normal brush and you're not really wiping the paint off. You're just sort of gently wiping. When you paint, basically what you're doing is, see, I'm loading my brush up and then I'm just sort of wiping some of it off the brush and then I'm very lightly touching the surface with my brush so that it doesn't you know what paint I have on the brush doesn't go down into the cracks so now I'm just gonna go over the basically everything on the figure with this and I'm gonna sort of just be uh, putting this layer color over all of the higher areas where I want it to look like there's light hitting the figure but I'm still gonna be preserving all the nice little you know, recess areas of the feathers that where that where that wash has already dried, so that you can still see the texture of the feathers, but still have highlighted areas. And on the shield, I'm using a typical just sort of blending technique. I'm putting the most color at the top and sort of dragging down, and applying sort of successive layers there to get the effect that I want. Um, once I've finished with the Evil Sun Scarlet, I'm going to mix some of that in with the Native American Flesh Light Shade to get sort of a sort of a pinky cast um, color, which I'm then going to apply again over areas where I want there to really be a lot of light, you know, for the sort of the highest highlight on these um, feathered areas of the figure. Now besides being kind of an interesting red feather suit, the one sort of hallmark of this particular warrior costume is there were actually decorations on the red which take the form of a series of, of double black bars located on different um, parts of the body and the legs and arms and also sort of a triangular pattern on the sleeve with also some bars. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that on in the necessary areas just using normal uh, black paint in this case. I'm next going to highlight all of the black areas I painted using the charcoal gray medium um, color from one of the foundry triads. And I will also then go back over with some um, charcoal gray light in just very select areas. It, it's not very much lighter than the charcoal gray medium, but it's nice to add a little bit of extra pop to some of the areas that I want to shade up slightly on the figure. 
And when I'm applying the, the charcoal colors um, to the feathers, the feathered areas, I am going to do as I did before in, in practice, over brushing. So I, so I don't apply it too heavily because I do want still some black to stay down in the feather recesses on the suit. Now I'm going to add some sort of creamy white details to parts of his costume and I'm going to be using the Boneyard Tribe from Foundry to do that. So you can see I'm putting it along the uh, bottom tips of the feather trim on his shield and then there's a border also you can see on his hat. There needs to be also a white collar on the top of his suit and he also has a creamy sort of colored loincloth that he's wearing. Also don't forget he's got little tassels hanging from his ears. He has sort of earplugs with tassels. Apparently those are actually made out of raw cotton, sort of like the stuff from cotton balls. It's kind of an interesting decoration and once you've gotten the base coat on in all those areas just go ahead and highlight it using the other two colors in the triad I'm now going to add a slightly different red stripe sort of along the base of his loincloth see I'm making a double band and also sort of above the white uh, portion of the on the on the bottom of the feathers and I'm using a base coat of um, Vallejo black red and then I will take a Citadel um, Wazdaka red and use that over the top as a highlight color in both cases. Then I'm going to paint the backs of his sandals using the um, Foundry Arctic Gray triad because he sort of had this little very very distinct white back to the shoes and I don't want it to be the same creamy color I used elsewhere because I want some variation. And I'm going to paint the disc that he's got on the front of his hat using the same three colors. Uh, then I'm going to paint the straps and the bases of his sandals using the uh, Foundry Rawhide Triad. Um, he's also got some little straps holding on the back, he's sort of holding a suit on the back, and you can paint those with the rawhide triad too. I forgot at this stage and didn't do it like I should have, and I had to go back in the last minute, but if you're doing a, a proper job, you should try and remember to do that right now. Now I'm going to work on some wooden areas, and that includes his sort of the body of his club and also the back of his shield. But you really can't see that very much, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I'm going to base coat all these areas using the Foundry Bay Brown shade, and I'm going to highlight specifically the body of the club using the chestnut shade. I'm also going to put a little bit at the top back of the shield and sort of uh, layer or feather that out just to get a little bit of light up there, but I'm not going to worry about it too terribly much. I'm then going to take some chestnut medium and use that sort of as an edge highlight just along the top part of the, or the wooden area on the club and also on sort of the handle, whether it's, you know, on the other side of where his hand is gripping the club. To make the clubs extra nasty, the Aztecs basically embedded pieces of stone or flint into the edges of their club. This sort of sharpened, it. yeah, kind of a nasty thing, uh, made it a lot more deadly. So I'm painting those sort of little bits that are sticking out of the edge using the charcoal black triad. And yeah, you're just going to paint it black and basically highlight it with the medium and shade colors as necessary on these little uh, bits of stone that are sticking out. Finally, this figure has some sort of greenish blue, kind of turquoise jade accent areas, and I'm using the Foundry Deep Blue Triad with some Vallejo Park Green mixed into each of the successive colors to paint these areas, which include the rim of his shield, a headband, um, the sort of the center of that white disc on his hat, and also he has little earplugs or earrings, which are also painted like this. I'm just going to play, apply each of the three shades with the green mixed in and on the shield make sure you make it brighter towards the top. Uh, when I'm finished I'll then go ahead and take some pure park green and apply that in areas where I really want some really brilliant uh, bright green color and, and then you get this really lovely sort of um, contrast as you can see here with the uh, sort of nice deep red of the uniform and hat. So here's our finished Aztec warrior. I think it came out really well. I'm happy with how the feather suit worked out. I didn't know if this technique would do a good job, but I think it worked brilliantly. There's a really wonderful deep red color that I've achieved here, and I'm quite happy about that. And as I said, this would be a great uh, figure for all sorts of different colors. And if you like painting bright, brilliant hues, this definitely is a figure for you. Um, if you, as I said, if you want to pick it up, 
you should keep an eye on the Gringo 40s website because it's definitely not out yet, but I suspect it will be out within the next couple of months along with a variety of other figures um, in the same range, which I imagine will also be very, very nice. So if you like this video, please like it, uh, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I don't know why, because I make so many awesome videos. And leave me comments on what you'd like to see in the future, or things you didn't like, or suggestions, whatever. And so I guess um, I will see you next time, and until then, have fun painting.